What's up my comic comrades? Today we continue our coverage of DC Infinite Frontier with issue 1. We broke down the giant size 0 issue back in March, and now that issue 1 has finally hit stands, we're going to talk about it. If you didn't watch our episode on issue 0 or read it for yourself, you're going to want to do that first before you watch today's video to avoid confusion and possible spoilers. You can find that episode right here. We also want to thank CrowdCal for sponsoring today's episode. Now you're asking, what the heck is CrowdCal? Well, it's delicious in a box. That's what it is. CrowdCal is a marketplace that allows customers to directly connect with farmers who are doing it right giving us access to higher quality meat and seafood than you'll find at the grocery store. Which means it tastes amazing and is much healthier for us and our families. In fact, CrowdCal hooked us up with this glorious box of goodness from Broadleaf Farms in Middle Earth. It's New Zealand. Okay, from New Zealand, but also Middle Earth. Anyway, I'm a big steak guy and that boneless ribeye is already whispering sweet nothings to me. But that's being reserved for our 4th of July cookout. So today we busted out some of the ground beef they sent us and grilled up some cheeseburgers. I kid you not, I could taste the difference in the freshness and quality of the meat as soon as I took the first bite. It was stupid good. But that's the greatest thing about CrowdCow, whether you're looking to smoke your favorite cut of meat or you just want to grill some simple hot dogs and burger patties. CrowdCow has you covered. And all through farmers who only produce meat that is free of growth hormones and unnecessary antibiotics. The meat is then vacuum sealed while it's the freshest and shipped right to your door. Not to mention you could choose from grass fed beef pasture-raised pork, and wild-caught seafood options. All with epic deals that'll keep you from breaking the bank, I might add. So with it being grilling season, CrowdCow is a no-brainer. Go to crowdcow.com forward slash variant comics or click our link in the description to shop from their inventory of high-quality beef, pork, chicken, and seafood and start building your own box. And when you use our link, members of the Variant Nation will get $15 off your first order and a free membership, which will save you an extra 5% off every time you order and get you free shipping on any order over $99. And to make it even better, for a limited time, CrowdCow is putting awesome free items in the box for new members as a bonus. You'll see what your free bonus item is when you click our link. So go to crowdcow.com forward slash Variant Comics now and load up for your cookouts this summer while supporting farmers producing healthier and more sustainable meat. That's the biggest win-win I could think of. But now that we've got your summer barbecues on point, let's see where things are headed with DC's Infinite Frontier. Infinite Frontier issue one starts off with a rocket ship heading to Earth before it crash lands on a farm all Superman style. As a couple walks up to the crashed ship, they say, what the, Batman, as we see an injured Thomas Wayne Batman inside of a pod. The woman then says, that's not our Batman, must be from someplace else. The man then speaks up saying, here we go again, with a woman saying, call Calvin. And the man just tells her, the boy is too busy running the country to deal with other worlds, ma. But she says again, call Calvin. He then sighs saying, we moved out of the city to escape all this craziness. Why would someone ship us a Batman? The damn multiverse is nothing but trouble. As the panels zoom out, we see this is happening on Earth 23. After this revelation, we are brought back to Earth Zero, the main Earth in the DC universe, where we see Extent, an obscure villain from DC's past, trying to cause another crisis with some fourth world artifact. But he is quickly stopped by the Totality, a new team that consists of heroes and villains, which formed at the end of DC's Death Metal. Extent is initially struck with a giant train construct from Alan Scott Green Lantern, at which point Mr. Terrific contains the Warlagog artifact, and Vandal Savage finishes the job by bringing Extent down. With the crisis averted, Alan Scott tells Hawkgirl, I'm late to a meeting with my children. She says, we got it, Alan, you could take off. Tell them I said hi. When he arrives, his son Obsidian says, you're late. And Alan says, as are you, son. Obsidian then replies, I might not be saving the multiverse like you, dad, but I had my own superhero distraction to take care of. As we see, he was fighting Mr. Freeze in Gotham. Speaking of Gotham, they're currently in Gotham City, and Obsidian says, Gotham is so different during the day. Why are we here? As they continue to fly over the Gotham skyline. Alan then tells him, it's Jade's idea. One of the earliest Justice Society headquarters is in Gotham. Jade said we were meeting some old friends today and she wanted us to join her. To be honest, I'm worried your sister had been avoiding me, so I'm just happy she reached out. Obsidian then says, come on, the multiverse had been destroyed and then restarted again. And now you've joined a group of heroes in a secret space station so you could monitor any potential changes to the multiverse to keep watch over everyone and everything and the kitchen sink. Both of them then land in the street, changing into civilian clothing and start walking towards the JSA headquarters. But as they're about to go inside, a green explosion goes off from inside the building. Both of them suit up again and run inside looking for Jade, but she's nowhere to be found. She isn't there. And Obsidian says, I can't feel my connection to her. Where is she? Where is Jade? We are then taken to Paris where we see special agent Cameron Chase, who's being interrupted while she's eating dessert by Mr. Bones. If you don't know who Cameron Chase is, she's a government agent who's tasked to monitor and neutralize metahuman threats to national security. As for Mr. Bones, he's a former low-level villain and the current director of the DEO, aka the Department of Extra Normal Operations, and despite the way he looks, he's a man of noble intentions. Now that everyone's caught up, let's continue. After making small talk with her, he asks, 
Did you know a super god from another world came here and messed with reality? She asks, which one? He then says, while lighting a cigarette, you joke. Now people are worried about the multiverse. The people shouldn't even know the multiverse exists. Chase responds, that's a genie you can't put back in the bottle, Bones. The multiverse is mainstream now. He tells her, yeah, it's exhausting. Moves are being made to ensure another event is stopped before it could ever get started again. The DEO has been reinstated. We need you back. I need you back. Full authority. All the bells and whistles. She then looks at him saying, you know I hate you, right? Why would I ever work with you again? He then shows her something on his phone saying, because of this. She just looks at him saying, how? He then gets up saying, you know what happens when people turn me down. Enjoy your dessert. She then just says, I lost my appetite. Elsewhere, the Justice Incarnate wake up Thomas Wayne Batman, but him being confused, not knowing where he is or who these people are, starts throwing elbows saying, the other Stooges couldn't hold me and neither will you. As he lays everyone out in the room, he runs out into the hall where he looks up saying, where am I? And a voice answers saying, what you see is the bleed and you're in the House of Heroes. We are the Justice Incarnate. As we see, it's Calvin Ellis Superman saying this with the rest of the Justice Incarnate behind him, including Captain Carrot from Earth-26, Aquawoman from Earth-11, Mary Marvel from Earth-5, and Machine Head from Earth-8. Machine Head then says, we protect the multiverse. Thomas Wayne asks, and who are you supposed to be? Superman replies, my name is Calvin Ellis, but most people just call me President Superman. Thomas just looks at him saying, that's a mighty upgrade compared to the Superman where I'm from. Calvin asks, and where exactly is that? Your escape shuttle crashed on our farm on my Earth, Earth-23. Calvin then asks, what were you escaping from? Thomas just says, just get the Flash, okay? He can explain all that science mumbo jumbo. Calvin asks, which one? Thomas replies, Barry Allen. Calvin asks again, which one? Elsewhere, we see Barry Allen from Earth-0 recording a message to the Justice Incarnate. Remember, at the end of Death Metal, he started working with them. Anyway, Barry says, I can't just run to this new world like I would any other world in the multiverse. It isn't just further out on the map, but I have a theory. If I vibrate while I run through all the known worlds, I could gather enough multiverse energy to access our mystery world, AKA Earth Omega. And it turns out his theory is right. On Earth Omega, he says, whoa, I hope you're getting the signal, Justice Incarnate. While taking a look around, he finds that someone has killed a quintessence. And as we know from Infinite Frontier issue zero, that someone is Darkseid. He asks himself, who has the power to kill gods and why? Justice Incarnate. Call an emergency meeting now. Connect me to the Justice League. Tell them that death follows us again. It's so heartbreaking. But as the Flash is trying to get reinforcements, he's interrupted by the Psycho Pirate who has an Omega symbol on his chest now. Psycho Pirate then tells Barry, I know we've been through some changes since last we saw each other, but haven't we all? A voice then tells Psycho Pirate, you may toy with the Flash after you fulfill your promise. Remember your new role in the story. Now, people who read Infinite Frontier Issue Zero know this voice and the person Psycho Pirate is working for is Darkseid. Psycho Pirate then puts his hand on Barry Allen's shoulder saying, you heard the boss, Speedster. There's a new crisis coming except this time you and I are gonna be on the same team. You're gonna help us find something, or I guess I should say, someone. Meanwhile, back on Earth Zero, we see a girl arguing with her parents about whether or not the Justice League saved humanity and fixed reality. Because apparently some people remember the crisis and some people don't. As the daughter asks her parents how could anyone forget the world ended, a guy in the booth behind them says, I'm sorry, I know this is rude, but I overheard you and I remember it too. The skies were red, right? The girl then says, yes, oh my God. The guy then tells her, when it stopped being red, there was all these other Earths in the sky. And the girl says, that was the multiverse. And as this conversation is going on, we see Roy Harper at another table listening to the conversation. In the previous issue, we learned that Roy Harper mysteriously is now back from the dead after the reality changing stuff that went down in Death Metal. Another person in the restaurant gets in on this conversation saying, would you two shut up about the multiverse already? It's not real and you're not special. Things get heated so Roy gets up and gets in the aggressive man's face but before he could shut him up, someone blows through the wall. And we see them say, target, Roy Harper acquired, extract. Let's catch us an arsenal, boys. Or is it Speedy or Red Arrow now? Whatever you're calling yourself, this world doesn't like you. Begin extraction, boys, no witnesses. At which point Roy says, everyone run as these futuristic mercenaries start opening fire. Roy then gets shot in the shoulder after pushing the aggressive dude out of the way. The futuristic woman then says, prepare the boy for travel. Roy, once we get you to your new home, you're gonna wish you stayed dead. But on the next panel, we see a gigantic fist punch this woman through the roof with her soldier saying, what the, opening fire on shadowy figures. Said figures then throw these guys through the wall of the diner. We then see Roy say, whoever you are, thanks for the save. Hello? Oh no, Roy, 
what have you gotten yourself into? As we see, he is now a White Lantern with all of his past personas as constructs behind him. And with that, the issue ends. So for me, there's two big takeaways for this issue. The fact that Thomas Wayne Batman was rocketed here from another Earth to Earth 23, and we don't know why yet, but I guess we'll figure that out as the story continues. And then the fact that Roy Harper is now a White Lantern. It was shocking enough that he was brought back from the dead in the last issue, but now he's a White Lantern. Things are getting crazy. And all I gotta say is I cannot wait to see where it goes from here, but do you have a favorite moment from Infinite Frontier yet? Let us know down in the comment section. First up for the week of the 30th, we have Shang-Chi issue two. There's a cosmic cube for sale and everyone from Hydra to AIM to the hand is ready to pay up for it. But Shang-Chi and his five weapons society might outbid them, unless a certain Star Spangled Avenger has anything to say about it. Next up, we have giant size, amazing Spider-Man chameleon conspiracy issue one. This is the epic conclusion of the chameleon conspiracy. If you thought the end of the King's Ransom shook Spider-Man to the core, you better think again as this ending will level things up. Now we have Teen Titans Academy 2021 yearbook issue one. All I have to say is, in this issue, we get some clues on the origin of the new Red X. And finally, we have the Infinite Frontier Secret Files issue one. This issue will give us a ton of secret info and data on things going on in DC's Infinite Frontier. And that's gonna bring today's episode of Variant to a close, but if you like today's episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. It helps the channel out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.